Diet culture, weight loss advertisements, you know them well. But there are a lot of myths about weight that are not backed by science. I'm Rachel Miller, Self's Editor-in-Chief, and today I'm going to talk to Aubrey Gordon about her new book, You Just Need to Lose Weight and 19 Other Myths About Fat People. This is Self's Well-Read Book Club. The first myth is that obesity is the leading cause of death in the United States. Hi, Aubrey. Hi, Rachel. How are you? Let's talk about the quote-unquote obesity, quote-unquote epidemic. Yeah, absolutely. People still believe that there are 360,000 Americans who just drop dead from being too fat every year. Aubrey did a deep dive on the often cited statistic that around 400,000 people die of obesity every year. And what many of those reporters have not done is read the actual paper that it's based on, which states plainly that the researcher's assumption is that every fat person who died in excess of thin people's deaths died of their fatness. And this is really one of those cases where the methodology here is extremely shaky. So here is that quote um, from that mortality study that suggested that our calculations assume that all controlling for age, sex, and smoking, excess mortality in obese people is due to obesity. Can you um, explain that a little more? We've been assuming that if fat people lose weight, those fat people will then go on to live longer lives. And we don't actually know that. Uh 100%. So when a fat person dies, it's much more likely that our death certificate will say died of obesity in the same way that when someone over 80 dies, it's much more likely that their death certificate will say that they died of natural causes. Most death certificates are filled out based on a visual assessment of what we assume is happening with that person. Aubrey also argues that we should unpack the term obesity more. Anytime we're invoking, in this day and age, the term obesity, quote unquote, what we're doing is we're referencing the BMI. And that brings us to our second myth the idea that BMI is an objective measure of health. It is worth noting that the BMI was never designed for um, use for individual health care. It was used as a statistical tool by a statistician and actually someone who was best known for being an astronomer. He developed the BMI entirely on the basis of data that he gathered from French and Scottish men in the 1800s. So it was developed entirely by and for white men to establish the idea of an average man. It has never been tested or meaningfully adjusted for use with communities of color or for anyone who's not a man. The BMI has come to popularity because of this idea that fatness alone is a health condition, when really the way that we use it medically mostly is as a proxy for other health conditions. When we're looking at how someone comes to be a fat person, scientists have already pinpointed almost 60 genes that contribute to someone's body size, right? Right. Unfortunately, as Aubrey points out, the BMI remains widely in use. Another myth Aubrey debunked is the idea that losing weight is just a matter of calories in, calories out. We do know uh, that calories in, calories out doesn't work. <laughs> That idea came from a paper that was written by an MD in 1959. State of science in 1959. Right. <laughs> State of science in 2023. Right. Different places. Yep. I think it's fair to say that the evidence that he was using at the time by today's standards would not reach the threshold of sure. being, con yeah. being considered like evidence-based medicine. Right. right. His idea was that one pound of body fat was 3,500 calories. Mm -hmm. So if you just created a 3,500 calorie deficit, you would lose a pound of fat. Congratulations, right. simple arithmetic. There yep. you go. The challenge is <laughs> a couple of things. Right. One, as any person who has tried to lose weight knows, your weight loss progress starts off pretty strong and then it starts to slow down and then after a while it plateaus. That's because your body is learning to downshift to meet the amount of energy that you're giving it. So it starts burning less because it's searching for some kind of stasis. There are many, many complications with these sort of calories in, calories out formula, but that's a big one. It's not a straight line. Right. Over time, your body starts to overcorrect as we've seen through that pattern of weight regain. Like, Listen, I am sure there is a minimum of one person yep, there's always watching one this video person. <laughs> right now who has crash dieted. Mm -hmm. If you have crash dieted, my guess is that you know not all weight loss is healthy of weight course. loss. So there is one longitudinal study of folks who were on the TV show, The Biggest Loser. Folks were exercising sometimes hours a day and reducing their caloric intake really dramatically to like medically troubling levels. And what they found was that 
over time, that amount of crash dieting and trying to maintain that level of weight loss took so much from folks that those folks actually had permanently suppressed metabolisms, presumably as a result of this volume of crash dieting. So we're sending fat folks in particular off to do something that is scientifically impossible and that is fundamentally like, even if it were possible, is a weird way to handle the existence of people who don't look the way you want them to look. A 2015 research review of sort of calories in, calories out was published in the Journal of the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. And they said that calories in, calories out is easy to use, but quote, lacks a contemporary scientific foundation and leads to a large error in weight loss prediction, even over the short term. Like don't use it ever. Guys, just like ever. don't use it ever says the American Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. <laughs> this is just the tip of the iceberg of the myths and misconceptions that Aubrey debunks in her book. There was one Harvard researcher who gave oh, a real chef's kiss of a quote, which he just said, you can't pick the right diet if none of them work. I wrote in my notes, diets don't work, exclamation points. Yeah, I mean, I think the tricky thing about just lose weight, which is like a catchphrase of like, so many people who have never been fat, right? It's like, just lose weight, just do it, it's fine. Is that it is at its core really dismissive. Mm -hmm. It's also not rooted in any kind of scientific understanding of how weight loss operates. Well, Aubrey, thank you so much for talking with me, for talking about this book, it's amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. It is always such a joy to talk to you and it's always such a joy to be like back with self. So that was our book club pick for January and this is actually part of a recently launched book club called the Self Well Read Book Club where we read a book kind of like this every month. If you're interested in reading nonfiction books that relate to taking care of yourself, taking care of the world around you, definitely follow along and join us next month when we will be talking to a new author about another great book. <laughs>